Okay, and the last question on the paper, question seven. A multiple choice examination paper has n questions where n is larger than 30. Each question has five answers, of which only one is correct. A pass on the paper is obtained by answering 30 or more questions correctly. The probability of obtaining a pass by randomly guessing the answer to each question should not exceed 0 0.0228. Use a normal approximation to work out the greatest number of questions that could be used. Okay, it's a big eight marker. There's a lot to take in. Let's look for some clues in the question. Okay, so I don't know how many questions. We're just told to refer to it as n, and n is going to be a large number, larger than 30 at least. Um, each question has five answers with only one correct answer. Okay, because of that, I should be able to find the probability of guessing the question correctly. You will pass if you answer 30 or more questions correctly. The probability of obtaining a pass, so that's the probability of answering 30 or more questions correctly by guessing randomly should not exceed 0 0.0228. Okay, we can't guess and pass with a probability bigger than that. Okay, and we've been told to use a normal approximation. Good. I know exactly what I'm going to do. The greatest number of questions that could be used. All right. Let's try and put some of these bits down. So we are actually using a binomial distribution because there is going to be a set number of questions and there's going to be a fixed probability. Only I don't know what that set number is. We're going to try and figure that out. Probability of one-fifth. Let's go again with the expectation. Expectation is that one-fifth. And since I'm about to do a normal approximation, I should definitely get down the variance. It's a variance of 4 over 25. N standard deviation is the root of that. I know the root of 4 over 25. It's 2 fifths. So 2 fifths root N is what I'll put down for now. OK, so we were told a pass should not. A pass on the paper is obtained by answering 30 or more questions correctly. Probability of answering 30 or more questions correctly, we want that to be smaller than or equal to 0 0.0228. Now this should be a nice starting point for me to go ahead and put in place that normal approximation. Okay, so firstly let's um, state the normal distribution that we'll be using. We're going to use y. So y is going to follow a normal distribution of 1 -fifth n with a standard deviation of 2 fifths root n. And we'll square that to make sure we're displaying the variance. OK, so to standardize, okay, being careful to keep a continuity correction. So I want it to be greater than or equal to 30. Do I want to include 30? Yes, I do. So my continuity correction has to go from 29.5 upwards. And that will make sure that we keep 30 within the region we're working with. OK, so let's standardize. So the probability that z is greater than or equal to 29.5 minus the mean, so that's minus 1 fifth of n, all divided by the standard deviation, 2 over 5 root n. OK, I've gone ahead and standardized. Let's not forget that that is meant to be less than or equal to 0 0.0228. Okay, now that we've standardized, I'm looking at that probability and that four digit number is looking quite familiar. That is going to be a probability that's attached to a Z score. So let's have a think about which Z score it will be. I'm going to get myself a little diagram. Okay, so the probability that Z is bigger than this particular Z score is quite a small probability. So the Z score we're looking for over here, the probability that we're above that, so to the right hand side of that, is quite a small probability. So that lets me know that the Z score should at least be positive. What else can I tell from here? How about if I found this probability instead, since my tables are built, to tell us less than or equal to probabilities. Okay, 
So, what statement would that be? So, it would be the probability that z is less than or equal to this particular value. Okay, is greater than or equal to a 1 minus, should get me that red probability, 0 0.9. Seven seven two. Okay, that's looking even more familiar. So actually, I know the Z score for zero point nine seven seven two, and that Z score is two. So this standardization should roughly lead me to the number two. So twenty nine point five minus a fifth of n over two fifths root n should approximately get me to. So from here, I'm actually going to try and rearrange. I can see I should actually get quite a nice equation from here to work with. So let's go ahead and relieve ourselves of this fraction. I'm just going to go for the equal sign now. Okay, so that should be 4 fifths root n. I can see an underlining quadratic here. I'm just going to do some rearranging. So one fifth of n plus four fifths of root n minus 29.5 equals zero. Now, there is a quadratic here. One of the powers of n is double the other power of n. I have n to the one and n to the half. So there is a hidden quadratic. Let's go ahead and let y equal root n. And now my quadratic should become one-fifth of y squared plus four-fifths of y minus 29.5 equal to zero. This is what I want to solve. I'm just going to quickly put it into the quadratic formula. I could rearrange and make it look a little bit nicer, but to be honest, I'm happy to put these values into the calculator. One-fifth, four-fifths, negative 29.5. Okay, all of that into the quadratic formula in your calculator should give us an answer of y equals, in decimal form, 10.3085. So I know that that's the root of n, but I wasn't here to find the root of n. I wanted to find out what n equals. So squaring that gives me the answer 106.2659. To four decimal places. Okay, very nice question. Tough when you first look at it, but actually it breaks down into some very manageable skills that we should be able to deal with. Very manageable skills that demonstrate we have a good understanding of the normal approximation, a good understanding of the binomial distribution, quadratics, and S2 in general. That will be worth all the marks.